Shalom, Gavin. Salami. <laughs> Salami. Great topic. It is, yeah, it is. It's a very, uh, pr very powerful topic that gets people going because it's very emotional. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Be nice to have some. Some atheists to yeah chat chat with about it, eh? Yeah, absolutely. What's up, ogre? And what's up, Chris Hello. Keith is in the house. Hello, hey, hey buddy. Sh Shalom, Chris. Shalom, Oge. The problem of evil. Ravi Zacharias says it best. And the problem of evil, when you say there's too much evil in the world, you assume there's good. When you assume there's good, you assume there's a such thing as evil as a moral law on the basis of which to differentiate good and evil. And then you, the rest of it goes on to, of his uh, line of reasoning is that you basically assume that there is a moral law of absolute, which yep. is kind of defeating your point. If you're trying to disprove God for being evil, then you kind of, you're kind of proving them. Great point. Um, uh, so, a question for you. Yeah. Um, I know the mole monster argument is a common atheist tact. Um, how do you think it works as a uh, theist approach? Like, would you go try to convert someone to theism with a God is good argument? Do you think that's a good approach? Or do you think there's like that's like a weaker one to play, weaker thing in your playbook? Um, I think that, well, the way you explain it there to me seems like a weaker argument where, um, we, we just don't know God is mysterious, you know, what God works in mysterious ways or something. Okay. Um, and I've heard people argue that way. And I think I disagree with that, that method, methodology of, uh, argumentation, but you know, if they, if they, if they want to go that route, they can, but they need to show that, um, how that makes sense. Like, what does that, I guess to me, that's just trying to make it unfalsifiable that God is always good no matter what. So yeah, I disagree with it anyway. All right. So, so this is more of a defensive play stream yeah. than anything else. Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. It's a, it's, well, that's what apologetics is. The word in the Greek apologia, it means defense, me putting a defense up. That's, that's basically yeah. what I'm, what I do in this channel is just defenses. I'm sometimes I'll go on the offense to make a point to people like on transcendentals. I'll, I'll go more on the offense there, but most of the time it is defense. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Good question though. Thanks for the question. Yeah, no problem. So it looks like Tog has a quarrel with what I was what I was claiming. So I'd like to hear your opinion on this, even even atheists or Christians. Do you believe a molester, murderer, uh, etc.? Do you think they should take on the uh, death penalty? Do you think they, if they were repentant, let's say they were trying to be a Christian? Or they, they claim to be when do you think they should part of the repentance accept the death penalty? Yep. I um, go ahead, Org. Um, I guess so granted atheist here, but I would imagine if you are a repentant Christian, you are losing opportunity to evangelize and bring souls to Christ if you do the death penalty. So okay. I, as a Christian, I see you kind of like, it seems like not the approach you would take, right? That's a good point. I never thought about that. That's actually a very good point. I mean, point. lots of people get converted in prison. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, you can be converted, you know, if, if you're a murderer, I mean, but you're still going to have consequences for your actions on earth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, but like, the, the point was, should they. I'm not I'm arguing against you. Yeah. yeah. The what now? The way I read that was like, 
you are converted should you try to avoid the death penalty is the way I've heard the question. And I think it, a converted new Christian would want to avoid the death penalty because now they have a new job, essentially, which is be Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, Christ, can you, Christ, can you repeat it again, please? Can you repeat your question again? Yes. So a, a Christian that has claimed they have seen the light of Jesus or have come to a point where they've converted, and let's say that they are not, they don't have the death penalty cu- uh, currently, do you think they should seek the death penalty to fulfill their repentance, to show that they are repentant and accepting of their consequences? No, because you give to Caesar what's Caesar's and you give to God what's God's. If you're living in a country that doesn't have capital punishment, then seeking the death penalty would be... Um, be suicide, would be suicide, Yeah, it'd be suicide. It would be, <laughs> it would be outside yeah. of, of Scripture. It would be outside the, the, the bounds of Scripture. Yeah, if, gotcha. if, if if the law of the land is um, that you live in is death penalty, and then you commit if you commit murder and you know full and well what the penalty is, then you, you, then there's rep, replications for uh, what you do. Uh, so can I rephrase the me. question? Yeah, uh, w- I would rephrase the question to should if you you know commit the death penalty, you got life in prison. Should you try for parole as a newborn Christian? Why not? There's, there's an interesting. Uh, uh, well, because then you're saying I don't deserve to be in prison anymore. That's the whole point of parole, right? Well, per- per- parole would only kick in if you were a convicted murderer after you've spent many years in prison, and you can you can become reformed in prison. Yeah, there so has then you to- want to have the penance penance then, right? I'm trying to rephrase Praise's argument a bit to be a bit more broad. Yeah. yeah. So. It's a very interesting question. Um, <laughs> I was, see, with my viewpoint, I was even seeing if they were truly repentant that they would accept uh, or try to seek what was due or what's coming to them, whatever you want to call it, what the consequences lay out. So, I mean, that even goes beyond that. So <laughs> I would say no. <laughs> <laughs> so that seems very Old testament of you. Yeah. Exactly. All right. But there is data. There is data praise that illustrates that capital punishment does have a desirable effect on society. It does. It's Com- a compared, yeah, compared to uh, societies that have no capital punishment. Correct, and that's precisely why I am all for capital punishment. That why people should, you know, put the little check mark box <laughs> before they uh, pick their congressman or whatever, you know, people to make sure that's part of their legal legislation. Yeah. Well, the main argument against it usually, besides besides the you're killing someone, is the cost argument. Uh, do you find there a rational way, like an actual way to uh, alleviate the massive cost of the process? Or, like, what would your response to that be? Yeah, it was my it was my understanding that it's the tax money of taxpayers. It's way more money if they're just sitting in a jail cell. I thought it's way less to uh, just juice them. Or whatever the well, it takes a, it it takes a long time to put somebody to death. You know what I mean? People sit in there for decades sometimes. Yeah, they do. And then then, yeah. then they, whereas they would also have the legal fees paid for because they're appeal after appeal after appeal. So, yeah, that's that's what I was getting at, Chris. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, when you're on the death penalty, you're trying to usually the person death penalty tries to fight it as much as they can, which racks up the bills, and you can't really say you can't fight it, right? Because it's the life they're fighting for, but death penalty is also, according to that, way more expensive than people that just sit in prison for the rest of their lives. Yeah, I don't know the actual numbers, but it, it, it seems like it might be, probably would be, because um, 
I don't know. It depends on how long the person lived, too, though. <laughs> well, true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. these things eventually level out, but that's yeah. a common argument against the death penalty. Yeah. yeah I'm not that, really yeah. pro or con, but you know, I'm just trying to think this conversation's interesting. So, yeah, yeah I haven't, I haven't, it is because I haven't really formed an opinion. I don't know on it really, to be honest with you. Um, given that the, yeah, yeah pr- praise given oh, praise and guys in the room, Chris and Olga. G- given that the data shows um, societies or cultures that have capital punishment have uh, lower incidences of first degree murder, that would that would help me lean towards capital punishment because of the deterrent factor. Oh, I agree. It's a good deterrent. You know what I mean? Now, now Texas is a state that's like they got the death penalty at express lane. You know what I mean? And uh, but I, I, if that would be a good place to look and see what the um, what the um, statistics are for the because uh, there's a lot I of murder, some murders stuff in that the private chat from a quick Google search. There is. Yeah, I threw it in the private oh, chat. Oh, you did. Okay, cool. So Average. that's why that's kind of why uh, I'm getting my basis of the numbers. Gotcha. Average cause of trials are the most favorite. Hmm. So, uh, Moni, I'd like to. What do you mean by children suffering? What does that mean? Could you explain that to me? Do you mean like cancer? Do you mean um, abuse, child abuse? I mean, maybe you can unpack that for me. That'd be awesome. But yeah, these are great discussions and uh, very provocative. But they, uh, yeah, I think my point was actually kind of the good. There's good points, uh, good rebuttals there. So I don't know. Like maybe if a Christian, I mean, if if someone really does convert into Christianity, maybe there doesn't need to be a death penalty. I don't know. But I'm thinking, I to me, if they were really like sincere. You know that I would th- take on for your consequences. But that's that's only. I guess that's my line of thinking, though. It's tough, no question. Yeah, those are those get into uh, gray areas, man. Because then, <laughs> how, how how do you know if somebody's really saved? You know, <laughs> what's the test on it? There is a interesting um, documentary about a a guy that was on the death penalty, and then they um, somehow. Um, reverse something along the way and he came off death row and then he uh, was lived long enough to actually be paroled here not too long ago. Yeah, I guess he's still out with an ankle bracelet for the rest of his life, but he's, I don't know that so far he's committed any crimes, but um, yeah, that that's, that's another argument against the death penalty is it's finality. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you, you can't tell me that every person that's ever been put, put to death actually did the crime. Right. So how many, lives that were put that were put to death wrongly does it take to make the death penalty still acceptable you know what is yeah. that what is that limit <laughs> yeah one yeah. person would be too many <laughs> yeah you know the green mile right yeah I th- and i think that actually i would argue that they um well i don't know because you're if you're not on death pen death row it'd be hard to say that but you seem to me i would uh i wouldn't want to rot in jail for for decades you know i think i'd rather just be put to death and be done <laughs> that's my you say that but every single person on death row spends right all this money fighting it so I obviously but most of them much are, rather sit in narcissistic <laughs> psychopaths you know but not all oh yeah them, they got those too <laughs> me personally honestly i you know maybe when i was younger, i might have changed my mind at this point in my life um i well I, I wouldn't commit murder so <laughs> i mean that, that's thank you for that That'd be one thing I would have to worry about, but I mean, like, if I if somehow um, I got framed or something like that, then yeah, I guess I'd want to fight it. So, Shalom, David Neff. Good to see you. What's going on, buddy? Hey, not a whole lot. How are you doing, my friend? How are you, Orge and Chris? Hello. Hey, David. How you doing, buddy? Good man. Good to have you in here. So, do you want to go ahead and chime in too? If you want to have someone like to hear what you have to say too on all this. Uh, well, I'm getting ready to go to bed. I just want to say hello to you guys. And um, if you don't mind, I have a debate coming up on Thursday with Smoky Saints. Oh, wow. What are you guys debating on? 
Uh, we are debating on the coronavirus. <laughs> oh, what are you debating on it? Uh, basically, the kind of various different points, um, how seriously we should take it. And um, did yeah. you know uh, uh, if you looked into this, um, I have um, I have never had uh, take care of my grandfather's ninety four. I've mentioned a few times, but I've never had to have home health care come out. But they uh, a nurse. Came out the last couple of weeks. I spoke to one. We were talking about the virus, and uh, she said that the H one N one, I believe it was, or swine flu. Yeah, it killed more people than the coronavirus. Um, well, I have not. Well, in the United States, um, I don't know. I don't have the total for globally near mm -hmm. one me. Um, it has. Um, it definitely um, it's affected more people in the United States. However, only 13,000 people actually died of the virus in the United States. Um, that much I do know. And right now, the coronavirus in the United States has killed over 200,000 people. So um, you really can't come. They're kind of Chris. I, as I assume that is the um, not every death attributed to Corona is actually Corona. That's that's kind of a bullet point of that argument yeah I yes because yeah. i really don't believe that the, the numbers are accurate on that um right. so my, have, you know, my response that, to that chris would be do you think that they counted the h1n h1n1 viruses differently for deaths Did, was there like a change in protocol between the two to where h1n1 was accurate but then corona's not um maybe not if it was um did it did the h1a1 kill as many um younger people uh didn't more younger people die than more like right now it's killed more elderly right yeah corona's yeah that's what's said yeah H1N1, um, i don't i, I don't think h1n1 was that different from corona on those yeah. fronts i could be wrong hmm but we'll again, because what you're saying would have to mean that H1N1 statistics are better than COVID-19 statistics, right? Mm, yeah, it says shockingly 14 million to 34 million unit residents. Best guess, 22 million came down with H1N1. Um, there were 98,000 hospitalizations and um, estimates range 63 to 153,000. Okay. Um, I'm just... I'm just looking right now um, about the 2009 swine flu pandemic, looking at the total on Wikipedia. Confirmed cases, um, with, which, which is being lab confirmed cases, 491,382. Um, although the suspected cases are 700 million to 1.4 billion, and the lab confirmed deaths are 18,449, and though the estimated death total is about 284,000. So, um, it looks like it may have been far more contagious, but by all metrics, far less deadly than coronavirus is. And I'm actually going to be um, taking some time to address that point in detail in my debate. Yeah, it seems oh, like wow. it was a little more deadly, huh? Then, right? What was that? No, it was less deadly. Death deadly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Swine flu is less deadly than coronavirus by, by all metrics. Okay. I'll take your word on that then. If you look <laughs> now, another thing about the swine flu is that we got a vaccine up pretty quickly. <coughs> yeah, believe, that's a big thing. Yeah, yeah, I believe the H one N one is closer in the virus family to the common flu than COVID is. Right, the coronavirus is like more different. If I remember correctly, yeah, they're two completely different viruses. I'm not a virologist by any stretch of the imagination, though I really find virology to be quite fascinating. Um, I have not really studied up on that, but there's definitely a big genetic difference between the two, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to debate. I've heard, uh, Jungle just recently came down with it. He, he, I think he believes that it's like SARS 2.0 or something. Yeah, well, this is SARS-CoV-2. Um, yeah. Of course, you may remember SARS-CoV-1 from, I think, back in 2001 or 2003. Yeah. I did, it hit I Asia, did. yeah. Kill a lot of people. I wonder why that didn't spread so hard. Every virus is different. <laughs> yeah. It's true. I kind of I kind of want to address Moni real quick. Uh so she or he or she was mentioning something about uh child trafficking. Yeah, that is horrible suffering. And there's a couple ways I'm gonna address this. Uh firstly we do have successful cases of people be triumphing uh, over evil. So good always 
a strong person, it'll maybe make them stronger out of it, but they do triumph and they do later on in life, they do uh, end up succeeding in my, many cases, but the ones that don't, let's just say they don't triumph over that. There, there is particular scripture in revelation that says that God will wipe away their tears. Um, so in the end, there, there's still, I mean, it's going, whatever the effects of evil has ever happened, it's going to be erased anyway. Um, so I'll put it, I'll just answer it that way. If that's not sufficient, I mean, you know, I'm, that's the best I can do right now. Anyway, interesting. Anyway, guys, I am absolutely exhausted. I've been up for over 16 hours now. I'm heading off to bed, but uh, this one is like me. Ugh. Get you some rest, buddy. Yeah. Hey, praise. I definitely yeah. want to set up another debate with you. Yeah, that'd be cool, man. Let's set up up anytime. We'll go on SFT's channel or MDD or whatever, man. You're a good opponent. Good stuff. And I'll see you later, buddy. All right. See you, my friend. Good to see Take you. Take care. Take care. Later. Yeah. So I guess uh praise about your view of heaven. Where are you getting your opinion that Gabriel's a jerk in heaven? <laughs> or Michael? Well, Michael is kind of like a power prick to me. Like he um he's ahead of all the <laughs> angels. <laughs> like yeah. he might I don't know, maybe I'm just kidding. It's more of a jazz, but well, I'm yeah. you, you can have dicks in heaven. Like there's gonna be people there that will think about themselves sometimes and or act kind of asshole to people. I mean that's just the nature of free will people, souls. So that's gonna be around, but the murder, rapes, the all this other stuff's gonna be necessarily eliminated. So those we don't even have to worry about. So do you view heaven as a sinless environment? Um, that's that's a great question. No, I say that it's a uh, saved environment. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, that, again, atheist, right? But that seems interesting that God abhors sin, but will deal with every saved person sinning for eternity. In new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. That seems kind of a counterintuitive to me. Yeah, he he does hate yeah, sin because agree, he, he he infinitely hates it. But here's the thing, though: none of us will ever achieve perfection because only Jesus is uh, perfect. Here's yes. what Jesus said: He came to save us. He didn't come to condemn the world, but he came to save the world. So salvation hmm. is is, is the more important than. Uh, being God, being a legalistic uh, person that just sits back and just writes all your sins down and and, and and rants on you. I mean, so I don't think that's the way God is. He's out to save people. He's a loving being. I think people get these misconceptions about him. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. That's I, I you would I would definitely say that's not the take you usually hear on a televangelist Sunday. So right. Yeah. It's. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. Televangelists, televangelism to me is cheap, and I think they're more worried about their pockets. And you know, that's kind well, of you know. Yeah. How could you say such a thing? Demons oh, yeah. on private <laughs> public planes. Come on. Yeah, Kenneth Copeland. You ever seen how weird that guy is? That guy is whacked out. Yeah, that poor. That's that guy. Is just a, he's got his day coming. <laughs> Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of them though, like him. He's not the only one. True. Yep. So we're saved by grace. We're not saved to be perfect perfections or yeah, perfect masterpieces or whatever you want to call it. But that might end up being a case. We can get pretty close to that, but I think only God is perfect and will always remain that way. And that's good. We don't want to be, I don't want to be on that level. There's no way I want to be in that level. <laughs> I want to say there's one of the people that shows up in these chats is like a, he he thinks that he's sinless or something, or like the sinless doctrine. I want to say, uh, yeah, yeah. sinless someplace. perfection. Yeah, that's that wacky. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not familiar with it very much. So. Yeah, yeah he, I am. I've investigated. I, I think th everything's by grace. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Chris. Yeah. Well, no, I'll just say I think I've seen. I don't know if the guy you're talking about, the uh, Matt Powell, and was just like he um. He ended up somehow. I can't. I have to look back at what I wrote. He ended up sinning while he was in the in the uh, in, in the debate. So, ah. <laughs> oh no! 
I forget how he, what he did. Um, I have to look at my comment here. What the scenario was. I'll find out. I'll go back and look at it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of different doctors to contend out there with, but uh, that's why I like to stay disciplined with the scripture. Scripture interprets scripture. I like to just stay within that parameter. And if you do, you usually are consistent with your theology. And these other people either don't understand the Bible, so they they invent their own. Or they disorder and twist it, um, but unfortunately, yeah, we have to contend with that right now. But all this is coming to an end pretty soon, anyway. Well, I hope not, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we need to get some. Well, we you need to get some more atheists in here because I like to hear their. Uh, they're they're opposing arguments. I think it's good to investigate them. Uh, I guess I can try. I mean, yeah. Let me think of. Okay, uh, I got one for you. Um, a retort I've heard a lot is the question of so dispensationally speaking, certain time periods had certain salvation requirements, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, and and when Paul came down, uh, grace was a new requirement. Basically, accept Jesus into your heart. That's the only thing you need to do, right? Right. So, from that point, if you do not accept Jesus, you were going to hell. Yes. Yes. Without faith, you're going to hell. Yes. So why would so? it took a long time for this argument to reach the entire world. The question is, did everyone in the world before the message got to them, go to hell? So you're talking about pre gospel or are you talking about just people that live out in the middle of nowhere that can't have, it, access it, work, to it works for any particular dispensation, okay. but like the new world obviously wouldn't have known about this stuff, but there were millions of people in the new world. So, yeah. And telling them about Jesus, by definition, allows them to make the choice and then go to hell anyways. So yeah. if they if they wouldn't have gone to hell without knowing about Jesus, then you shouldn't have told them. So how, how, what happened to all the Native Americans? Essentially? So, yeah, uh, God addresses this in Romans 2, 14 through 15, and he judges people off their conscience, the moral law in their heart, and how, how much they've neglected or... Um, violated their conscience so god still judges them based on their conscience so that okay so the why so what is the more argument for adding jesus into the mix then um like, so you have grace when you do violate your conscience which you probably do a lot um that we receive grace f for that mercy yeah so they knew world people were kind of living by a weird version of the Ten Commandments until they got their software updated with Jesus, essentially? Yeah, you can say it like that. Um, but here's another thing, too, that um, the scripture is not real clear on this, but there could be a millennial period where they might be exposed or have another chance or have a chance to listen to the gospel. Like so the, the Book of Judgment stuff at the, after the thousand years, that sort of right. thing? Well, no, it's during the thousand years. So let's let's wow. say like someone lives down the sticks, and um, you know, like you ever you ever seen those people that have the cones, you know, on their whatever on their yeah, chest? Yeah, 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 yeah. So those people might see God has great mercy for those people. Like I think they would probably be in the millennium, even if they um, even if they never heard the gospel in their life here, they would probably be in the millennium. There's going to be a whole mess of people coming in the millennium, all the aborted soul, all the aborted children and all the handicapped people. And uh, all these people will be there. So I think that would be another option as well. So what do they say in the meantime? Um, it's like, do they, do they get yeah. to hang out in heaven? Cause they were nice people. But then they don't like Jesus, so they get sent to the lake of fire. 
That seems kind of yeah. I don't think anybody's in heaven or hell at the moment right now. Right. Yeah. Heaven doesn't even begin till after the Great White Throne of Judgment after the Millennium. So we would say they're in Sheol. Uh, a, a separation. They could be on the, the like Luke 16. There's a great divide, a chasm, and there's two sides. So they might end up on the other side, but that doesn't yeah, mean like where the rich man, where the rich man saw the poor man. That thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, but that the poor man's still in like good place, right? Yeah. You mean last so, year? Yeah. Yeah. So then the Native American. That lived a good life, didn't you know? His conscience was good enough to go to the good place, but then doesn't accept Jesus at, during the thousand years. Then gets sent to the lake of fire. That, yeah. That's a situation that oh, could yeah. happen. Yeah, absolutely, that could happen. Yeah, and I'm not a hundred percent sure, but um, that that is that seems to be the case, or it, it gives allusions to that in scripture where some people might be given that grace to do that. Um, that's all it's up to God, you know, what he wants. He knows he's the hard knower. He knows every thought of a person. So it, it, whatever he does is just, so I'll put it that way. All right. So, yeah, I guess, you know, from my point of view, I could see this sort of fitting in with your uh, talk you gave, if you want to, I don't know what you call it, your lecture, uh, this video <laughs> yeah. about the problem of evil. Because, you know, I, obviously you take the opinion that, you know, God is good, therefore God is good. But to someone who doesn't take that view, that seems like kind of a bad dice roll to give millions and millions of souls. Mm -hmm. Let me ask, can I ask you something? Or, uh, over? Of course. Um, do, do you believe there is evil in the world, right? Uh, yeah, sure. I I have no problem with that sentence. And then that there are some things that you would consider absolutely evil. I mean, we don't, we could probably think of one if we, I'm sure yeah. we could agree upon. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, okay. If you consider it evil, I am, I assume I consider it evil. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, um, wouldn't that kind of necessitate, um, that there is some standard out there from which that comes from? Um, yeah, I could say there's a, there's a reason why I call bad things bad. Yes. And it's just, it, but it's so it's not necessarily um, necessarily um, subjective. So I, I think you get into the objective, subjective morality thing. Yeah, because yeah, I don't want to get too and, hard on that because yeah, you know, yeah, that's a that's a because, comment because you can say like you know what if, you know you should never absolutely never kill, and then what 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 about. You know, if someone somebody, comes after my wife, yeah. obviously I'm going to yeah. shoot him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, that wouldn't um, be, that'd be murder. That's not murder. That'd be self defense. So that'd be, well, yeah, we, but we, know, we know what we're talking about. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm not, I'm not super fluent in the circles that go on around here. So my opinions maybe don't follow the wording that is correct, but still the way I think. So I believe in an objective morality, but I don't take it to the same end point that you guys do. Like, you, the, the the subject of morality is man decided what's good. Objective of morality is God is. I think there's good things, but I don't think that God did them. Does that right, make sense? Or, or God's the author of them or created them? Yeah, like they, I, they, I think they come think, about because of of man and the need to. Um, to yeah, I think they're naturally occurring. More, I think morality is something that could naturally occur for the betterment of X Y Z society species. Uh, once they get to that point, spiders don't have the same morality that lions do. Right. Well, nature period, because like if a squirrel <laughs> is going to die and it's going to go take the other squirrels nuts, if it needs to, it's just going to take them. Well, yeah, know? but I mean, like spite, like for example, spiders and things like that, that are really low on the intelligence level, more or less, um, do act in different ways than let's say deer do. Yeah. You know, like a spiders who just eat each other kind of because they're there, where a deer is not necessarily always going to try to gore something for fun. And that, right. to me, I can I can see that as a morality. Mm -hmm. And then you can level it up to, let's say, humans, where we can set down, okay, stealing's bad, but beating someone up and stealing's worse and tearing it. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that, you know, humans are distinct from animals. So I think that's probably the I area agree. that, yeah. And one of them, I think here's like here's a great distinction is super rogatory acts. I'm not, I'm not. Are you familiar with that, Ogre? 
Um, let me refill my glass of water. My mouth's dry. So give me a minute. Oh, and yeah. then, no, sure. I'm not. Sure. Yeah, I'll explain that. It's um, pretty. In, it's. I think it's pretty indicative of of a moral, a higher morality. So no talk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree that like it's from like the, the Bible back. says that it's written in her heart because um you know I I, I kind of knew what was good or, or or what was wrong or right before I even got saved so yeah okay I'm back yeah so I'll I'll explain supererogatory acts so supererogatory acts go beyond what is required uh for some type of benevolent act so. For example, uh, an army soldier jumps on a nade to save someone else or one of his brothers or whole people. So he gave his life to save others. That's not required in nature. I mean, there's nothing in nature that says, uh, uh, you know, like an ape will, you know, <laughs> I don't know what they would have to, you know, die for another creature or something like that. But, um, that shows that we have the capacity to go beyond what's even required in biology. Oh, and yeah. so to me that if, if, the, if morality was merely a biological construct, then there would be no such thing as these supererogatory acts or temp see temperance is another one, uh, forbearance, those things that require self, selflessness rather than selfishness and it's it's all um categorized under a um sacrificial love so sacrificial love to me is anti-ethical with biology or evolution if you want to call it that so go yeah if you so that's a that's hopefully that made sense does that make sense or yeah yeah uh, i see what you're going there um i guess i'm not familiar with the subject but uh two points one, if we had, if nature did have super word, <laughs> if nature yeah. did have yeah. those acts, how would that affect your opinion? And two, um, if nature doesn't have those acts, then I, I guess I would take that as a, we are a civilization, not just nature. So that's where that would come from. Off the top of my head. Okay, so... If I see nature do that, I don't think it would be inconsistent because I think Genesis makes it clear that animals have a soul and they might have some type of um, inclination to do something like that. I don't know. I haven't seen it really. I don't mean maybe I have maybe with a whale or something saving a human. I think I've seen that one time. <laughs> so that's yeah. interesting. And Nippa did it all the time. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, but so, does, but does the whale know that it's risking its life necessarily? Yeah, maybe it doesn't. See, that's another yeah. point. So I don't well, know. Like, an how example, we can know that. yeah. An example I could think of would be a tiger attacks a bunch of apes, a bunch of monkeys, and one monkey goes down to fight the tiger, so the monkeys could escape. Yeah, that yeah. would be. Yeah. You know, I I I don't I I don't have an example of that on hand. But I also find it hard to believe that it's never happened. Yeah, but that would be more like probably usually there's like in, in, there's usually like a dominant monkey, and um you know so he's going to defend his um to, to keep his dominance. You know he has to defend the um the group. You know against the, the like I say a yeah. rival monkey. So that would be the, like same thing as like if a predator come, he, he would be the one that would be required or, or called upon to defend it because if he didn't, he would lose his position in that hierarchy. Well, I don't know how the monkey would think, <laughs> yeah. but that's just um, kind of the way I've I've seen in, um, in um in in nature from what I've I've seen kind of some documentaries on that. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So I guess that yeah, that'd be my approach. And then the second thing would be, well, this is an example of where civilization kicks in, you know, where we do set a uh, importance on that. Captain America threw himself on the grenade to show his you know captain americanness and that's from society not necessarily from any sort of supernatural entity yeah we definitely see it in like mothers defending their young and stuff like yeah. that 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that that is definitely present. It's an instinct right there for sure. So it could be mm, inst- yeah. instinctual, instinctual there because they could be thinking they're defending their young too. Or, so I guess I guess my only pushback is, brand. yeah, like I'm sorry, yeah, but um, you know, like evolution is select. So you know, in natural selection, you have mutation. That's the that's the driving mechanism of of life according to yeah. evolutionists. So um, we know evolution would not select things that are virtues like moral principles so th- even those are conceptual they're not even they're not even physical i don't i don't know where you can even uh examine something and find a virtue like uh temperance like you're not going to find temperance under a rock or if you open up an animal you're not going to find it you know in some type of investigation the scientific how are you method. defining temperance so temperance is having limits like you you suppress your desires oh, okay it's, gotcha yeah i usually think I, I thought of like alcohol abolition but you're using it like not just for alcohol yeah it's well you could even yeah go into sex you can go into drugs alcohol whatever um gotcha. i understand now it, right so yeah i think it, it, the, the natural selection, the supposed uh, mechanism for evolution, it only selects f- for traits that would make us an organism survive or continue on existing. And it would actually, to me, go against uh, – see, I don't even see how it's possible to select something like moral virtues. So I think definitely evolution could not generate some type of um, – I, it's 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 actually, I think it's actually classified as transcendence in uh, psychology, and we actually had uh, we're, uh, we had Gavin in here. He had a great citation for that. But maybe when he comes in here, he can give you that citation. That th- there's six f- virtues in psychology. One of them's like uh, friendliness and all these, and then there's like the sixth one called transcendence and it, it goes beyond the bounds. Yeah. The, you know? Gavin's talking about that. Sounds familiar to me. Um, I yeah. guess off the top of the, off the top of my head, my response would be, I am of the opinion that society and civilization has brought new morals beyond what biology did. Um, so I could see perhaps a reason for temperance, in a society that's not there in just nature. Uh, and then secondly, the blanket term of this couldn't happen isn't super uh, scientific to me, right? You you would kind of need to, if you wanted to, go into each of these individual virtues and discuss, well, are you sure it's not something that could show up naturally? I don't, I, I'm too, I, it's too late in my day to do that, of course. Yeah. But mm-hmm. that, that's kind of how I would look at those two things. Yeah, well, it just seems to me like um, you. It would be almost be better for the species of humans if, um, because you would want the the strongest, the best, the most fit humans. Yes. Um, so it would, oh, like, usually logically follow that um, because in nature, you know, the sick uh, usually get killed off because they're the weak, and that it's better for the whole, the species as a whole. To because it, it weeds out the um that that where they where they're sick because they, they could have some kind of like disease that might spread yeah. to the population, so so it seems like we would want to get rid of those so we would have the best humans that would put, put the best offspring off so we our our uh our species would would get, become in danger of uh getting a lot of mutations in it you know that would be yeah. harmful and, and could, we do have lots of examples going way back in time of uh, this generosity to, towards the meek and the impaired. Right. right? There's a famous, Altruism, uh, yeah, yeah. There's a famous skeleton in, uh, I think in like ancient China talking, you know, what well, I would say like 15,000 BC or something like that of someone who was born with a severe skeletal issue to where they like never could walk or move. And she died at like 70. And this is like kind of like proto civilization age. And her family kept her alive, and she actually was buried with like ornamentary beads and stuff like that. Well, see, we, we, we if she's buried with or beads like that, we don't know that they, because sometimes they might think like uh, older people could be um, somehow um, in some cultures are looked upon as like um, you know, of course, like you know the pharaoh. Like if you remember, like um, 
he had like a disability. Uh, was it King Tut? You know. Oh um, yeah, yeah. So like you, you would you could maybe expect that they would keep you know some people alive if they thought they were um, a deity or um, yeah. Like that. It's mid, mid, the movie Midsummer does that. Yeah, good yeah. movie by the way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's just one example, top of my yeah, head. That's, that's an end local. Yeah, it makes. But cool. um, I guess. I, I would first of all wonder you you broaching into this like uh, parallel universe like what if humanity got killed all its poor what if Logan's run right. was the real reality would that actually be better I don't know yeah. I mean Logan's run I don't think I want to live in that or universe. what if Hitler was successful and um it, yeah uh, exactly you know assuming that that that, that um he, you know he. he I don't, I'm not going to say that the Aryan race is the superior race, but just assuming that um, he got rid of like the sick and the um, infirm and all that, or the, that's the same thing with the um, the mentally ill and everything. So yeah, I mean, you you kind of go into a you kind of um, going into a thought experiment of would that be better? Yeah. I don't know. I don't either. I mean, that's, yeah, you know, I I've I've worked, I've taught mentally handicapped people before. I don't. What do you say nowadays? You say handicapped? You don't say uh, that anymore. Do I, 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 yeah, I just say. I mean, I, I mean, only like challenge is what I would say. I don't know. Yeah, what I, I, you know, I've, <laughs> when I was in the public schools, I had students that way, and I had no issue dealing with them. They were an enjoyable part of the classroom. You know, I imagine the classroom would have lost a bit had they not been there, right? So, and then when they go on society, yeah, because it helps people realize, you know, that that, that they do have uh, be thankful for what they have. But um, yeah, yeah, and just you know, just the the lack of social awareness and the odd yeah. statements and the you know every third thing you said is actually kind of funny. You try not to laugh when <laughs> yeah. you're teaching, you know. So, I mean, I, I I don't I don't know if the morality to be good to the less. Uh, the physically and mentally impaired, I don't know if that necessarily is something that I would say couldn't have shown up naturally. Then again, mm -hmm. I don't know. Right? That, with yeah, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, that's a, a, a question that's probably not going to be answered unless hopefully it won't be answered. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shalom, Django. Um, Shalom, uh, Gavin. I got a, a question for the evolutionist or if there is any. Yes, sir. Um, how how would it work for like the the uh, animals that have a low reproductive rate, such as elephants and you know huge sauropods or whatever, and people, and they they have such a slow reproductive rate compared to bacteria and stuff. You know that really. There really is no cause for evolution. If if evolution is caused by mutations and, and allele frequencies and being selected, then how? And, and some people say that evolution is even going backwards now. You know? So. I don't see how that would even make any sense at all. Um, okay, I guess I, I always got I always like to preface with I, I'm now a biologist, so I'm just kind of going off what I can do here. Um, first of all, we are imagining a scenario where um we're trying to imagine this race we've never seen, so I don't know the correct answer, but I know for humans, part of the reason we spent so long rearing our children is because you can teach them these um, traits and these abilities that are, make them more strong, right? A lot of animals that rear their children, take care of their children, end up being animals that have more skills and abilities versus, you know, snakes and spiders and like the intelligence, the amount of intelligence and the amount of rearing go hand in hand. So that to me signifies that as intelligence grew uh j post birth child care also grew like that you can you don't have one without the other in nature so i wouldn't expect one to grow without the other through evolution i would say though if evolution is if it is in fact true um there's something going on out on the epigenetic level that's letting this letting let something inside the cell is communicating um, and they don't know what it is. Um, 
would ha- they would have to be. There has to be a mechanism they have not discovered because I know gradualism through point mutation is not possible. It's just not. There could be. I mean, you know, right? We learn new things about genetics basically yeah. every day. So there may there may be something in the evolution that we can look back at by looking at maybe, again, these creatures that do not rear their young in the same way and hold, hey, they're missing this A, G, C, D, whatever, and we yeah. have it, and we can make that branch in the tree. That may be possible. I, mm. I, yeah, from, I, I don't think it exists, view, but yeah, I I'm I not going to say it doesn't. Yeah, I've, got a, I've got a, a immediate uh, undercutter and defeater for evolution, particularly in terms of objective morality. Um, now, here's the reason why objective morality is not um, not derived from ma- from man or mere mortals. And the reason is this: is that whether we're Christians or atheists, we've got to we need an account of humanity that makes the distinction between a human being and a primate, right? Christians ground this human uniqueness on the biblical claim that we're made in the Imagio Dei. Um, and just as God calls creation into being, he calls humans, he calls us mere human beings to serve as his represent- representation on earth and in special relationship with him and with each other. And we are charged with moral responsibility. You won't see this in primates. You won't see moral responsibility in primates. Um, There's also the problem of cultural relativism, and that's a huge undercutter for the claim that objective morality comes from mere mortals or comes from men or has evolved through mankind over the centuries. And I'll give you a stunningly classic example of, was it two or three years ago, John Chow went to the Sentinel Islands to try and evangelize the natives there. And he was murdered in cold blood. Well, he was trespassing technically, so. Well, it doesn't matter what he was doing. He was murdered in cold blood because their objective morality was way different than John Charles' objective morality. Yeah. So, I mean, as an American, I'd have to say stand your ground maybe applies there. But um, again, I guess I, my response to that statement, Gavin, would be we do have a different morality from nature. And I think the evolution of civilization and the collecting together of people into groups for agriculture, for city building, for religion, what have you, gave us those morals. Um, I, I, I don't know if that's in our DNA necessarily, but I'd say it's in culture's DNA. And that's where that distinction would lie. How well, can those morals evolve? Yeah, the Bible. How can those morals evolve? The, the Bible gave how can us those, our culture. How can those yeah. morals evolve naturalistically, naturalistically, when they go directly opposite to the laws of evolution, um, yeah. survival of the fittest, this kind of thing. How would civilizations' laws evolve? No, no, it was no, no. Western, no. Western civilization got its morality from the Bible directly. How does how does the evolution of mankind give us objective morality? Um, so I guess jungle. I don't necessarily know if I'd agree with your statement, but. You have, I, I would say, nature to a certain extent has well, morality well, to it, and well, then you need an education. You need well, an education. Well, I, I wonder, because... I wonder, are there any, are there any like tribes that left that, that are under that we've discovered recently that, um, that would not, would not be aware of anything that we've taught them, so they're not influenced by any, yeah, we, th- yeah, there are plenty of examples of that, right? The and they have more... cultures before Christianity showed up, still had rules, still abided by these things without the need for a Bible to tell them that, right? The, right. The we're, 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 weren't raping their children and right. uh, oh. no, not wiping yeah. their hands if they finished their food. Yeah. So All these ideas, anti-slavery, that all came from the Bible. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I would well, argue uh, that was written in their hearts, but yeah, go ahead. But yeah. I'd like to respond to that really quick. So for a what you call, um, you said societies come together, but th- that means 
sort of an ontological basis, and I don't think evolutionists have an ontological basis of, of ought. So why ought we do these things? So it would have to be outside of humans to begin with for it to be ontological. So by to me, by default, it could never be evolutionary. It'd be just based on more ontology alone. So I guess uh, if I could try to frame, I gotta go to bed in like five minutes. By the way, oh yeah, so right. just, uh, we appreciate. To try, to, to try to frame this a little better in my own head. Um, tell me at what point you disagree. Uh, let's assume my worldview is accurate. Um, you have nature. You have you know monkeys, uh, lions, what have you. Have certain quote unquote morality to them. For example, they don't eat their young right away. Uh, and and that's like one of them is already dying. Um, they try not to steal from their children, stuff like that, right? Very super basic morality, if you will. Something that let's say a spider or a uh, cricket doesn't have. Sure. Would that be an accurate statement? Yeah, sure. That's descriptive, though. <laughs> what what, what no. I'm trying, what I'm arguing is the ontological aspect of morals. Well, I. I, I'm trying. I, I think I'm trying to build to where I think our difference is, so I can know it better. Okay. So that exists, and then there is a step between that basic morality. I'm going to use term morality, and what we have at proto civilization level, at your like, uh, you know, code of Hammurabi, Ten Commandments, stuff that we as modern humans don't follow necessarily, but civilizations at one point did, and that step to me is the civilization point. Are you saying that that step is something that you don't think could have happened? Um, yeah, regardless of what cultures did in the past, you need to have an, you need to have an objective basis um, to operate um, off of, to, to, to glean from. So there's no way you can say that has never been um, moral well, progress ever. Without an, an objective ontolo ontology, go ahead. Okay, sorry. so civilization oh, couldn't have made up the rules, in your opinion, right? No, I'm saying they could never advance. I'm saying that they could never progress. Well, I think we're trying to say the same thing then. And, yeah, I, like all all cultures have the same origin, anyways, from the flood, anyways, and the ancient cultures and the ancient beliefs and everything. They all <coughs> branched off from a single source anyways to begin with yeah and that's part where we would disagree uh, with org so you know that's that would be yeah. where we'd explain it but yeah well i'm trying to say if 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 my you're saying so how about how about if i said this like I'm, um, I'm trying to step in your worldview that's what i'm trying to so go yeah, ahead yeah. i'm trying, I'm uh, trying in to my worldview right evolution happened it's just for, for yeah, sake of conversation. yeah I'm, I'm trying and to do then that, right? your state your thesis praise jungle gavin is that god put morality in at a certain point would that be a, a way to combine our two thought processes i'm trying to figure out again he, where we're differing he made us differently than every other animal yeah but like if if evolution did happen for sake of conversation mo the morality needs to come from someplace so god would put morality into well, our souls at me, the point to where we're people Evolution is so far fetched; it's nonsense, anyway. Yeah, it's okay, not even the in the conversation. Yeah. yeah, you would have to if you not if I'm gonna step in your if I'm gonna step in your world, I, mean, just, I just couldn't even use God. I mean, it wouldn't even come to my head. So I'd have to um, just say like somehow uh, the morals evolved. Um, like let's say we're from primates, then um, somehow uh, we start off with a basic thing, like you were saying that the. Um, what what was you know you have to get along in the in, in um well, what's best for the group uh, on the yeah. whole population is going to have to be what what gets passed on so um so somehow they stumbled upon or i guess i mean they'd have to get some kind of uh, somehow um they would have to um gain better consciousness you know what i mean a higher consciousness no uh, I, I, I i i will definitely grant that the story i adhere to is uh has holes in it um mm. I, I i i'll grant you that i don't know how it's a huge um, step, a huge step i don't know how civilization level morality came about mm. i'm unaware of exactly the you know step-by-step -step guide i don't think science knows either so you know don't yeah, feel bad yeah. so. <laughs> but i also would not say that it's not it's not i wouldn't say it's impossible what you guys do i right. i don't quite see the impossibility 
Right. But I grant it. I grant. I don't. I couldn't explain it to you. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, that's fair enough. Yeah. 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 I mean, I. But that that goes yeah. to like ninety percent of our differences, right? Is that I can grant something you can't, or vice versa. So because so the thing that elephants are so different, people are so different, giraffes are so different. These are high level animals, and bacteria yeah. is is basically the same thing for supposedly millions of years and can't change or doesn't change when it could change theoretically when it can actually appropriate dna from other organisms well i, I yeah i gotta go to bed in like a minute or two but that's that's a, a whole different can of yeah. worms there where the i think i had a conversation with neff where why didn't think why didn't this evolve the way i think it should have that to me is a a blank conversation because it's well, you, know, you think bacteria is, should have done something different than my bacteria should have done. Would be, my question is more, how did the higher level organisms get so highly developed and different than everything else when there's, there's a very, very low re- mutation rate and very, very yes. low, low possibility of even becoming what they became, supposedly? Yeah, I mean, I can I, again. I can imagine that with the higher brain capacity for your elephant, your giraffe, what have you, these sort of things can come about, right? How, why? How did people? How did humans learn what plants were good, what plants were bad? Well, they probably watched animals eating the plants and know, hey, the animals don't eat this berry, but they do eat this berry. Maybe I can. So I that's I could imagine, you know, I could grant the possibility that something like that could happen if your brain is developed enough to connect A to B in an elephant oh, versus well, a spider. Well, there's, there's monkeys that eat berries that are poisonous to us. And if, yeah. If you, eat, and if, you eat the monkey, if you eat the monkey, you die. If an animal yeah, eats yeah, the but, monkey, they die. Sure. But I, I, I'm pretty sure we learn what berries eat, what berries not eat by watching animals to a certain extent. So... Well, I would think you have oh, to Oh, God told us what berries to eat. I don't know. Yeah, higher level than that. But but I just don't see how you can get all the huge diversity in the higher life forms while faster replicating animals don't even change. I, I would say one thing. If, if if I was to ever apostatize or leave the faith for some reason or, 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 or realize, uh, say, I, I don't believe in the Bible anymore like that, I would be a, a really lost person because I've, I've found it's just it's the evidence for evolution is just so um, not there <laughs> that I would have right. to probably go, go to al- aliens. I really would. <laughs> yeah, you, you'd have to. I, I just, I just, e- even if, even without God, if I take him out of the picture, I just, there's, I mean, there's but just then, no way I could um, accept the theory, man. I just. Then again, it. where did the aliens come from? Because I don't have enough imagination. I don't want to say faith because I don't want to put that onto you. But I, I just don't, I just don't see where point mutations and gradualism um, could could do that because that's where they postulate punctuate e- equilibrium to allow for a, a faster change. Um, I just don't right. see. I mean, right. like aliens would have to come down here and live in their primates or, or a lower class animal and then, and then uh, genetically engineered them to where we're at, where we're at today. That would be the only explanation I could have other than God. Yeah, I grant 100 percent a very vast subject. I don't yeah. know it then where did... either, um, but we're at that. We're, that's our bisect, right? You don't accept it. I do. Right, you yeah. Know, welcome to a society. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and in, in in some levels though, it is it is a matter of um. I mean, it, it's a broad word, but faith. You know what I mean, or belief. Well, I, yeah, I was saying, I think I was, I was high confident, a, high confidence, maybe. Yeah, like I was saying room a couple of days ago. I don't have a problem saying ogre, I believe I was, in evolution. So you have to believe. You have to believe in evolution. Yeah. I would I, say you I, have I agree. to believe I, in evolution, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, I agree. I do believe in evolution. I don't. I don't yeah. put the uh, same hatred yeah. on the word belief that some other uh, yeah. YouTube atheists do. That's just the way I like to do it. I mean, yeah. they may be more technically correct in hating the word belief than I do, but it gets me through the day just fine. So yeah, well, that's why I like to have good, good, good conversations to have because you give a yeah, we appreciate view. you, Definitely. Orge. We, we 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 do appreciate you because you're not yes. your typical. We not, can not have not a, your typical a, online. Because atheist, otherwise, you know, 
we get good yeah. conversation and honest without without any bias from your um because you're like trying to push the like a lot of them are really trying to push it seems like they're almost trying to d- convert us to or convert me to yeah, I, I, ha- I have had them do it yeah. before so, you know yeah. what i mean they, they, well hey. i was in uh <laughs> i was i i popped into the rages chat and uh i didn't end up joining it because they were just kind of sitting around jerking yeah language I, language I, I about for me each other <laughs> off about how much they hate xyz christian yeah and I mean, <laughs> what, what am i gonna get you? out of that you yeah know? yeah exactly and i and i understand that man and i appreciate you for that and i was the same way i went in there i'm like you know i wouldn't want to join that even if i was an atheist <laughs> i'd be yeah. off doing i'd be doing something else i wouldn't even be probably on youtube <laughs> and, and to be fair you guys do that too i mean i, I you guys don't yeah, have yeah, hands in that so yeah um we, we we do it too but i mean like you said um other night my, or last night my chat uh we kind of to our faith that's kind of what we've required to do <laughs> yeah, but i'm i'm more against evolution than i am any individual on yeah on I, i'm the same way i'm not really i don't hate any individual because they believe in evolution at all yeah. So, anyways, that's all I got. I gotta go to bed. Man, great so. talk to you. Get you a good night's sleep, brother. Yep. Take, Take care. care. God bless. Right. God yeah. bless, all okay. God maybe bless. You'll wake Cheers. up with more sense in the morning, maybe. <laughs> 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 jungle, jungle, hitting up. Right. Right. Or, ke- or keeps coming back. Or keeps coming back. We'll get it. We'll get them on the right path. <laughs> I, I think. Just, I, I think.